The University of South Florida and Tampa General Hospital are proud to present this educational video on transcatheter aortic valve replacement. Our team consists of cardiologists, cardiac surgeons, cardiac anesthesiologists, radiologists, and cardiac nurses. Same professionals who will be treating you or your loved one will participate in this teaching activity. By the end of this presentation, you will have a good understanding of how aortic stenosis can affect the body and how we at Tampa General Hospital can manage it using minimally invasive techniques. We hope that you will enjoy this video. Imagine over the course of a lifetime how many heartbeats and how many times the aortic valve opens and closes. In some patients, the wear and tear process causes the valve tissue to get damaged, especially at the hinges. The dead cells and the void created gets replaced with hard calcium. As the years go by, more calcium buildup occurs, further restricting the motion of the valve and causing aortic valve restriction or stenosis. The heart has an amazing ability to cope with this situation. It can still pump enough blood despite the reduction of the orifice size by increasing the force of its contraction and the patient may not feel ill. There comes a point, however, when the narrowing is so small that not enough blood exits the heart. At this stage, several things can happen. The brain may not get enough blood and the patient may faint or not enough blood can reach the coronary arteries. These nourish the heart muscle and angina or chest pain can occur. Blood may also back up in the lungs where fluids can build up and the patient may feel short of breath. This condition is called congestive heart failure. Once symptoms occur and if untreated, the patient may die. It is estimated that half of the patients would be dead in three years from symptom onset. There are no medicines that can retard the process of calcium buildup. The only way we can improve the situation is by enlarging the orifice size of the valve. Up until recently, surgery was the only solution to take care of this problem. During open heart surgery, the valve is excised and a new one gets sewn in its place. Either a metallic or a bioprosthetic valve can be used. Transcatheter aortic valve replacement, or TAVR, achieves the same thing as a surgical replacement, but without stopping the heart or removing the native valve. The valve is a processed cow pericardial tissue that is mounted on a stent or a metallic frame and gets shaped into a valve. This metallic frame gets mounted and crimped over a balloon that is similar to the stents we use to unblock coronary arteries. Now the stent valve and the balloon catheter are advanced through the leg artery and pushed all the way to the heart and across the old valve. There are two ways to implant these valves. The most common one is the transfemoral approach where we use the leg or femoral artery to get to the heart. Before we do this step, we have to inflate a balloon to make the orifice big enough to allow for a smooth passage of the bulkier new valve. First, we advance a thin wire or guide wire through the narrowed valve. Second, we advance a deflated balloon catheter over that wire and position it so that it is halfway into the heart. We then inflate it to crack the old valve and then retract it and remove it outside of the body. Since the new valve delivery system is bulky, we have to introduce a larger sheath in the femoral artery. Through this sheath, we can introduce the catheter and advance it over the wire that is already in place. By manually pushing and flexing through the aortic arch, we then carefully position it so that the new valve straddles the old one. We then inflate the balloon, which in turn expands the stent and the new valve. We then deflate the balloon and retract it. After we confirm a good valve position, we pull the wire and remove it out of the body. Now the new valve starts opening and closing with each heartbeat. The diseased valve is crushed behind the new one 
and is out of the way. In about 30% of patients, it may not be possible to safely advance this rather large catheter through the small femoral vessels. This is when we use the transapical approach. Instead of using the femoral artery to deliver the valve, we insert it through the tip of the heart. The distance between the tip of the heart and the valve is very short, and it's a straight shot. We can introduce a small needle in the tip of the beating heart and via a small skin incision. We introduce a thin wire and advance it across the old valve. We then advance a larger delivery sheet and secure it in place. Then we advance a balloon and inflate it to widen the blocked valve in a fashion similar to the transfemoral approach. By advancing the new valve delivery system over that wire, we carefully position it across the old valve. Then we inflate the balloon, which will stretch the stent and the new valve within it. We then deflate the balloon and we track it. Finally, the delivery catheter is removed and the tip of the heart gets repaired with sutures. Now, the new valve is opening and closing with each heartbeat, and the old valve is crushed behind it and out of the way. We can do the transapical operation while using the best X-ray equipment to deploy the valve and can promptly convert into open heart surgery in the unlikely event of a complication. The hybrid OR rooms are large and can accommodate all the equipment and personnel necessary to do those complex procedures in the safest and most efficient manner. The cardiac surgeons and interventional cardiologists work together to make and close the incisions, advance catheters, and deploy the valve. You could be considered for TAVR if you were either not a candidate or felt to be a high risk for traditional surgery. For example, if you have severe emphysema or liver disease, traditional open heart surgery may result in worsening of these conditions and make it hard for you to recover or survive to go home. Our research coordinator will arrange for you to undergo CAT scan of your chest, abdomen, and pelvis. Sometimes we need to perform a special heart ultrasound by advancing a small probe through the foot pipe. This procedure is called transesophageal echo, which let us measure the size of the valve that you need. The CAT scan can allow us to accurately measure the size of your pelvic and leg arteries. This is important for your safety. We will also arrange for you to undergo heart catheterization to make sure that you do not have other heart problems, like coronary artery disease, that may need attention. These tests are done as an outpatient at Tampa General Hospital. The heart valve team will then review all of your tests and determine if you will be a candidate for the transfemoral or the transapical approach. You will be admitted the night before the procedure and you will get basic blood tests and chest x-ray. The next day you will be taken to the operating room. Tampa General Hospital has a state-of-the-art hybrid OR that combines the latest cardiac imaging and catheterization equipment with a cardiac operating room. The procedure takes around one to two hours after which you will be taken to the cardiac intensive care unit. We're a well-trained team of intensive care physicians, nurses, and respiratory therapists will take care of you. You may stay in the unit for a few days, after which you will be transferred to a cardiac telemetry unit, where you will start a cardiac rehabilitation process. We will start you on blood thinners and may add more medications to help you throughout this process. Your doctors will check on you daily, and once the team feels that you are ready, the heart valve nurse coordinator will arrange for your discharge. You will be given prescriptions and instructions on how to take your medications and when to return for follow-up. We generally ask you to come back to the Tampa General Hospital's Heart Valve Clinic located on campus within two weeks of discharge. You will have access to our Heart Valve Nurse Coordinator for questions and problems.
rest assured that your safety, comfort, and well-being are our number one goal at Tampa General Hospital. You will be treated with compassion and respect. We promise you that you will always get the best expert treatment that you deserve.